Good afternoon. How are you? Well, it's raining outside, so I'm going to do a stand and talk instead of a walk and talk. So bear with me. I also think it's worth talking, and there's only one subject that I, that hits my attention today, and it's good news. It's good news for those of us who say, are the rules of the Constitution and of the Congress vis-a-vis -vis the executive and judicial, are these rules going to be followed? Because they are a combination of information and judgment, but also a check and balance on the excess of another department. Specifically, the president wanted to make nominations. He wanted nobody to have anything to do to compromise them in any way, shape, or form, wanted to have them run through in a kind of special proceeding, which is of questionable constitutional effect here, namely make a recess appointment when nobody's in town and, and then appoint these people in recess as if it was a necessity, and then they can sit in that office for two years without being considered by the Senate. Um, among the leading examples for one of the most important posts in the cabinet, the attorney general, Matt Gates was nominated by Trump, president-elect. Matt Gates has no credentials to be the attorney general. Matt Gates, as a practicing attorney, spent two years and probably didn't even handle a traffic ticket in that time. It might have been something if in litigation he even read depositions and summarized them for senior lawyers in a firm somewhere. More likely, he was spending all the time planning a career in politics, and I have no problem with that. But if you plan a career in politics and then you're appointed to be attorney general, you should have the character of someone, meaning good character, to take that position. And you should have the experience to actually uh, handle that unwieldy monster, which is the uh, Just Us Department, in my opinion. You've seen how even what we think is a friendly appointment can't get things done. Garland, the sleepy attorney general who couldn't figure out chasing Trump for two years and not until he was embarrassed by the January 6th committee. So what we have here is the following. Trump nominated Getz to be the attorney general. Then the function of the Senate under Article 2, Section 2 is to advise he is a good or bad choice and to consent or not. If they don't consent, he is not approved. Now, it can go through a committee and they can ask questions. There's a background check that is done. Trump would not like to have that happen, but it was going to happen. And senators have formal and informal meetings with the nominee before they hold the hearings. And apparently yesterday they had a meeting, some senators, with Matt Gates. And during that, they, of course, I'm sure, although we don't know what was said, but this is Washington, we'll hear about it. We can be sure that the question was, what about this investigation that was going on in the House that, and that you resigned quickly so that they couldn't issue a report that obviously was not going to be complimentary about your performance? Number two, you also were under investigation by the Department of Justice and Garland, who knows what he was thinking, but they didn't decide to go forward. And what would they have gone forward with? Him sleeping with uh, underage women, ch children, some say, um, uh, and, and repeatedly, and to, to be doing this with minors, and then in addition that these were, uh, these involved all sorts of controlled substances, um, and there was repetition and so forth. And so apparently this information is, well, I guess anything could be debatable, but not seriously debatable. So after meeting with the senators, uh, Gates withdrew his name today, uh, minutes before I'm standing here talking to you while it's raining outside. The, um, uh, now, why do I consider this positive? I consider this positive because instead of wrenching the nation back and forth, the senators have persuaded and perhaps persuaded the, the incoming White House, if you will, Trump-elect, that this is not a nominee who is suitable to be attorney general. And if you persist and the nomination continues, we are going to do a full and fair review of his credentials or lack of same and lack of character or lack of same and uh, go forward on that basis. In other words, the senators, in anticipating they'll be in control of the Senate in the, in the next session of Congress, have decided to resist the president 
asking them to basically uh, not scrutinize a nominee to head the, the uh, Justice Department. And, and they have decided not to go in for a recess appointment, meaning during a certain period of time when there's an opening in a cabinet position or some, certain other positions, the president can nominate someone and they, they, without the approval of the Senate, are good to go for two years. None of that was acceptable. That is a statement of government following the rule of the law and the Constitution. That is very different than what Trump wanted. I take that as a positive sign. The question remains how the other nominees will be handled, including the nominee for defense secretary, who himself settled a question involving um, his uh, misconduct with women several years ago. There's a sealed settlement, what that means. And when that's combined with his position disfavoring women in the military, it has a connection that makes it real in terms of not only character, but also policy. And he lacks the experience to be able to handle the Defense Department. So there are two nominations. And coming down the pike, we have the question of the uh, mass uh, migrant expulsion that Trump is talking about. The ACLU has asked under FOIA, Freedom of Information Request, for exactly how you intend to do that, because there are all sorts of reasons to be concerned. Do you have a person who legitimately should be expelled from the United States? Are they legally here? Do they have, uh, uh, you know, a, a status that permits them to remain here? Uh, are you going to bring them before judges uh, to have that decision? Is it going to be executed as the, as the statute provides by the marshal who's in the courtroom? So that's a, that's another, that'll be another test of the working government that we have, as opposed to the dictating potentate that Trump would be on the first day and every day after. So I hope, uh, I hope that's uh, useful for you to consider my views. Of course, you may have your own. But I think this is a good day for those who believe in a republic and who believe that no man is above the law. And in this case, we had a lawless individual attacking the very body that he sought to lead by the nomination of the president. If uh, I were advising the president, he would be appointed to nothing because he's a flashpoint now. He's a has-been. He deserves to be given a kick in the, uh, the hindquarters and sent on his way. And I'm sure we'll read other things about him and perhaps there'll be civil suits and so forth. The biggest problem since uh, Trump stepped on the stage in 2015 to now is that we do not have uh, people uh, paying for misconduct. And so there's a lot of hand-wringing and talk, but there's a cowardly reaction to this that the tools that we have, we never use. Republicans and Democrats are on both sides of this. The Attorney General's office is on the sides of this. The profiles and courage came from the members of de among Democrats in the, in the Senate and the House who are involved in impeachment efforts and who are involved in the January 6th committee, including um, the congresswoman I, I once worked for as her chief of staff and special counsel, Zoe Lofgren. And there are others. These people are the patriots and the heroes. That's what we need. We need more of them. And whatever that conversation was with the Republicans, both yesterday with uh, the attorney, the attorney general, who was a uh, nominee, who has since withdrawn, and the nominee for the defense secretary, um, I would hope that those conversations were conversations like I'm having right now, that, OK, we have won and now we're going to govern and we're going to govern by the law and we're not going to make this guy a dictator because perhaps we just don't trust that he can do it right. So if I were out in the woods, I would uh, say uh, adieu to you uh, until tomorrow in my cathedral of trees. But I do feel, even though I'm indoors, surrounded by nature and the rain and the comfort of knowing that there are forces that are often more reliable and better than mankind. And uh, we've had a drought here. So I consider this uh, a bonus. So thank you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.